We'll start with number 3, and let's just read it. It says the sum of 42 and a number, n, is equal to 51. So you could just almost write this verbatim uh, all in order here. Uh, so the sum of 42 and, okay, so the sum of 42 and a number n, so the sum of these two things, is equal to 51. And there you go. Uh, you could certainly find what n is, that'd be the solution to this equation, um, but they don't ask us to, so we won't bother with that very simple solution. Number six, the sum of 12. Okay, the sum of 12 and the quantity 8 times a number k. So this quantity 8 times a number k is equal to 48. There's your equation. Uh, and one more. Hopefully a bit of a challenge. The product of 8 and a number k so the product of 8 and a number k um, is greater than is greater than so this product is the thing that's greater so that's how we would write our greater than the larger size uh, the larger side of the inequality sign it goes to the greater side so um, is greater than 4 and no more than 16. Okay, so it's greater than 4. Alright. Uh, and they're saying, and it's no more than 16. Uh, so 8k is also going to be less than 16. Uh, and it just says no more than, so it could be less than, or it could be 16. 16 is, uh, let's see, let's see, no, yeah, no more than 16. So 16 is not more than 16, so if 8k were 16, uh, it wouldn't be more than 16. We can put this together. Um, we could say that 4 is on the small end. Uh, 8k is like between 4 and 16. It can't be uh, equal to 4 because it says that it is uh, greater than 4. And if it were 4, then it wouldn't be greater than 4. It would be equal to 4. Uh, but it says it's no more than 16, which means it could go up to 16. It could even be equal to 16, which is what this little mark means. But it couldn't be more than 16. That's it. That's it for that one. Um, next is number 12, which gives us a picture of something like this. Uh, there's a sale on sunglasses, and they're saying that there is nothing over $10. So let's say uh, that S is the price of a pair of sunglasses, uh, and nothing, uh, no pair of sunglasses is over $10. So S could be uh, less than or equal to $10. Um, the price of sunglasses could be $10. It says it's just nothing over $10, so it could be $10 or less than $10. So there we go. Um, so we'll go to number 18. And in number 18, we start to look at what a solution to an equation is. Okay, And a solution is a very simple thing. So 9 plus 4y is equal to 17. And they're asking us to decide whether or not 1 is a solution to this equation. That just means we're going to plug 1 in and just think about it. If one were a solution to this equation, what do you think would happen? Uh, let's try it. 9 plus 4 times 1 uh, is, you know, it should fit in here, right? So 9 plus 4, that's 13, but that is not equal to 17. So is 1 a solution to this equation? No. Um, and so like I said, a solution is a very simple thing. A solution would make the statement true. Right? This is a statement. It's, uh, it's very specifically saying that 9 plus 4 times y is equal to 17. And if we put something in for y that doesn't make that happen, then it couldn't be a solution. It's made it not true. We would need this equation to be true. Um, so 
if there's a value that doesn't make that happen, it's not a solution. Um, so in number 20, k over 5 plus 9 has to equal 11. So if we put 10 in here, will that be a solution? And that means, will this statement be true? So 10 divided by 5 plus 9. That's 10 divided by 5 is 2 plus 9. That is 11. So yes, it is a solution because the statement is true. It's made true by plugging 10 into k. Um, next, 22. And this is not an equation. It's an inequality. So as long as the statement that's being made, when we plug in the number that they give us, is true, then it's a solution. And if not, it's not. So the number they give us is 11. 11 minus 5 over 3. Uh, it's 11 minus 5 is 6. Over 3, 6 over 3 is 2. Okay, so greater than or equal to 2.8. Is 2 equal to 2.8? No. Is it greater than 2.8? No. So that's not true. So this is not a solution. So we should go back here and say no, and go here and say yes. Um, and 24, y, some number y minus 3.5 needs to always be less than 6. So any number that we plug in for y that makes this true would be a solution to this inequality. Okay. 9 minus 3.5 is 5.5. Is that less than 6? Yes, it is. So this is a solution. Uh, 29. All right. So now we, we are kind of getting to what algebra is all about. We are going to be given an equation, and we want to find the solution. So uh, the book says to use something called mental math. Uh, mental math is basically guessing and checking. And guessing and checking has its place in algebra. Uh, but it only has its place uh, as you learn something new. Uh, guessing and checking has its place for just a little bit at the very beginning, just so you can see what's going on. After that, we don't guess and check. Guess and check is not a big part of algebra. Uh, algebra kind of assumes we have an equation of some sort, some relationship between uh, an expression with an inequality in it and a number. Or some more uh, inequal or some more unknown quantities on the other side. Um, so this is a when we use mental math, basically we have a really easy uh, equation to solve. But as these become more difficult to solve, we're going to want to be able to uh, manipulate them and, and apply concepts and quote rules um, so that we can solve more complicated problems. But here, a number plus 8 needs to be equal to 13. Uh, so we just need to find a number that when you add 8, you get 13. Um, and that number would be 5, yeah. So I just pretty much added a bunch of numbers to 8 until I got 13. And 5 was the number that you need to add to 8 uh, in order to get 13, so x must be 5. x couldn't possibly be any other number. If we put a number that's bigger than 5, we get a number that's bigger than 13. Numbers that are smaller than 5 give us numbers that are less than 13. There's just no other number that works. So x is the solution, and it's the only solution there is. Um, so just be prepared for the fact that guessing and checking, it will end, and it will end soon. Uh, at least for these simple equations. Uh, so please, please, I implore you not to rely on guessing and checking. And if you feel like uh, you're the kind of person who just sees the answer, you just see it and you don't know how you got it, you just know what it is, uh, what's happening is you're solving really easy equations, and if you don't know how to tell me how, then um, you're not using algebra. Uh, in this one, 8 times some number is 72, so I just, you know, think about my multiples of 8. Uh, you know, 8 times 6, uh, 8 times 7, no, 8 times 8, no, 8 times 9 is 72, so 
B must be 9. All right. And the last one, 39. Uh, so you're, you're doing a walk for charity, and you have walked 12 and a half miles, and you want to walk 20 miles. How many more miles do you have to walk to meet your goal? So this is a really simple problem. Like, these are really simple problems. Um, so you may have a problem like this, and just know the answer, quote, unquote, just to know the answer, and not know how to use math or algebra equations to express this problem. So that's what we're going to work on. Well, for a simple problem like this, I, I probably wouldn't use an equation. I would just imagine in my head um, maybe like a, a distance of 12 and a half miles and then some more amount of miles until we get to 20, and I'm just trying to think, you know, how big would this have to be to get me to 20, and personally, I would, uh, you know, add another half, so I know I have a half a mile to get to the next mile, which is 13, uh, and so that would put me at, at 13 miles, and so I would need another 7 miles, so 7.5 miles is how much farther I have to go, but that's a really simple situation, uh, and we want to get in the habit of using um, new methods, uh, maybe seemingly overcomplicated methods, because at some point that method of, of writing an equation, which we're going to do over here, is going to be simpler than trying to do all this stuff in your head. Right now, doing it in your head is simpler than writing an equation. And writing an equation seems overcomplicated, so we avoid doing it, because we have a way that we're comfortable with that we can do it. Um, but, like I said, that's going to end in the near future. Uh, you're not going to be able to do all this stuff in your head. Okay? So, we could write an equation. Um, and the way that I thought of it, I just thought uh, 12 and a half plus some unknown amount should get me to 20. Right? So, 12 and a half plus x equals 20. Okay? So, this picture that I had in my head. Uh, of, of somebody having walked 12 and a half miles, you know, there was like this person here, and they had walked 12 and a half miles, and they need to walk a little bit more to get to 20, how much would that have to be? Now we represent that in an equation, rather than a picture uh, of, of some kind. And this, the process is the same, 12 and a half plus some number is 20, so that number would have to be 7 and a half, just like we decided 7 and a half had to be this distance. Okay, so... Uh, again, an equation is different from an expression. An expression doesn't say anything. Um, you know, 12 and a half plus x is an expression. When I say that 12 and a half plus x is equal to 20, now I'm making a statement. I'm saying something definitive about this amount. Um, and that's a, that's a really important distinction to make. Um, and... Like I said, guessing and checking and just, quote, knowing the answer or just seeing it and not knowing how I got it, uh, that's got to end. And it's got to end soon. And I will help you with that. So uh, I hope those sample problems were uh, helpful. And if you need help, let me know. Thanks for watching.